So, welcome again. Uh, same shirt, same ridiculous fluffy hair. Now we're going to go back to some more Excel skills. So, once again, this is an optional uh, extra. It's going to be introducing you to something called nonlinear regression uh, and some least squares regression. Uh, entirely optional and some additional skills for how you would actually go about solving this kind of in reality. So, previously I covered how to uh, solve a first order rate constant just by doing this linear method. We just linearize the data and get a straight line in the gradients k. So that's a pretty neat way, but what if the rate data was a bit more complicated? Um, well, you couldn't use that method, so, but you could use this method or at least a variant on it. So what we're going to do is try and replicate this result using a different method. And it's going to be sound a bit long-winded and trivial and a bit pointless. And to a degree, yeah, it is when you can do this version. But uh, this is more extensible. If you've got more complicated data and more um, more kind of um, rate data and more complicated reactions, this is a lot more applicable. So as before, let's just make the data nice and tidy. Um, I have this as seconds, there we go. So that's time in seconds. This is our concentration data. And if we plot it, we get that nice little decay curve that's kind of uh, not very good. Um, so remember, we wanted to discard these last two data points. So we want to fit these four only. So you can see there's a nice little decay curve there. Uh, now, one of the things that allows us to do this is the integrated rate law. We cover this a little bit later when we'll do a bit of data acquisition. So if you know that rate is equal to the rate constant times a couple of concentrations, if you integrate that, uh, you get concentration. Much how like you take distance and differentiate with respect to time, you get speed. So if you take speed and integrate with respect to time, you get distance again. So the same thing speed of reaction, you integrate, you get your concentration. Uh, and this is the form, this log form that we are exploiting previously. So that's a linear equation um, where the gradient is equal to k and the x value is equal to t and that log of the initial concentrations are intercept y equals mx plus c. This version, however, is the exponential form, uh, but it predicts what the concentration is. Um, that there is the concentration at a particular time. And so if we plot tail on the x-axis, we get this nice little exponential decay curve. So that is a prediction of um, what the concentration should be at any one time. And if we can get that for any particular set of reaction data, uh, no matter what it is, if it's second order, third order, or a bit more complicated, or there are more than one rates to solve with a lot of concentrations going everywhere, we can feed this into a simulation and get the rate constants out. And this can work for as many rate constants and as many entities as you're following. Uh, like I said, I've got one somewhere that will solve up to five at a time, five different things exchanging and dozens of different rate constants. But for now, we're just going to do the basic version where we're just looking at one rate constant and it's kind of first order. Uh, so I need two more um, columns here. I want my data and I want to call this one so I'm going to put my calculated data here. Uh, before we start that, though, uh, let's think of what do we uh, need. We need some constants to work out. So what we need from that equation is a zero. So a zero equals, uh, and now just to tidy that up a bit, I'm going to highlight it, format cells, subscript. There we go. It looks nice now and then k equals. So let's just stick some random values in there. Now I've kind of pre-formatted these to be right aligned in slightly different colors to make them stand out. Uh, if you have a system for what should be target cells or what should be input cells, uh, it makes things a little easier. Uh, and what I want to now do is do a defined name job on these as well. So I want to right click that cell, define name. Excel thinks I want to name it a underscore zero close enough for me. Uh, this one, I want to right click to find name. Excel wants to name it K. Again, good, good for me. So if you've set these up initially, uh, when you do to find name, it picks them for you automatically. Great fun. Uh, so now I want this equation to tell me 
this. So for this, what do I need? I want equals, and it is equal to my initial concentration, A0. Now, if you were to do this and drag down, you would need to start using um, those absolute references. You would need to do D, oh, sorry, 1. If you just use the named ranges, you can bypass that entirely. So it's one advantage of using them. So I want that, and I want to multiply that by e to the minus kt. Now, you can't just type e uh, hat there. Uh, for this, for Excel, you need an exp function. So that raises the Euler's constant to a certain thing, and I want minus k multiplied by the time. There we go. Let's close that down. And if I let that go, it's 1. Uh, oh, that makes sense. Um, I've set my initial concentration to 1. Zero, uh, time 0, that should be the initial concentration, so it's 1. So that works perfectly fine. Let's drag that down. And what you can see is that goes down pretty sharpish. So let's click here and drag that graph across. What you can see is that dies pretty quick. So what I want to change is maybe lower the rate constant a bit. 0.5, maybe I want 0.05. There we go, I'm not starting to see numbers now. So we can see that here the rate is decreasing in the calculated one, that's the red, um, and the blue is the experimental data. Of course, this doesn't quite match, does it? I mean, the red is much higher. That's because our initial concentration isn't particularly high. So let's change this to 0 0.25. Uh, so that's a bit closer to here. Our rate constant's a reasonable estimate. Uh, and that's a bit slow, so let's increase that to 0 0.02. Uh, it's still a bit slow, so it must be a bit higher than that, 0 0.005. Okay, it's starting to match, but how do we work out um, what's the right fit here? Uh, and we do this through something called least squares regression. So least squares regression is kind of what's happening behind the scenes when you tell Excel to fit a trend line. It does it sort of automatically. It doesn't tell you that it's doing it, it just says it fits it. Uh, but what it's doing is simulating a y equals mx plus c graph and fits it to your data points. So we're going to do that now manually. Uh, but what we can now do is do it to some much more complicated equations. So you've got a more complicated equation than this. You can type it in, um, check it to your data, and do any kind of fitting you like. So what I want is difference. So let's have a look at this. The difference, we want to just subtract one from the other. Let's Let's kill a few of those decimal places and drag it down. Okay. Uh, now, what you'll notice is that some of these are positive and some of these are negative. Let's drop them down. Uh, now, that's not very good because that means if you have some data points that are above your calculated values and some data points that are below your calculated values, they will cancel out. That's no good to us. So, what we want to do. Instead of just that, we want to square them. So I'm going to put some brackets around those two cells and do a little hat sign to the two to square it and drag it down. So now they're all positive. So as the data diverges away from your calculated values, all of these values will go up, whether it's below up or otherwise. And I'm going to delete those last two because, as I said, we're not going to fit those last two values so we don't care about them. So deleting those means the next bit isn't going to do anything to it. So I want equals sum. And I want to just highlight that entire column. So that's now a sum of all of the numbers above. And what I'll do is I'll just highlight it and bold it. So it's, this is our target cell. So this is a sum of the squares. Now, the least squares in the word least squares regression refers to the fact that we bring this down to as close to zero as possible. So to show you how I'm going to do that, I'm going to right click this give this a name and call it target for now. Now you need to do something in Excel called Solver, and this is a tool that's really useful, and it's you know if you do more complica complicated Excel work, you'll be using it quite a lot. And it's found in the data tab of the new things, usually off to the right. I think my face in this screencast covers it, but it's called Solver, and here we are. 
Uh, if you don't get this and you can't see it, just go to Google and type Solver Excel. It'll tell you how to activate it. You have to go through options and the add-ins and just enable it and it appears. It's really straightforward. Just look it up how to enable Solver. So Solver, look up Enable Solver. It will 101 different instructions. I'm not going to go through it. So Solver, this gives us uh, a set of parameters. So I've already installed some of them, um, but I'm going to do it again anyway. So I want to set objective. What's my objective cell? I already called it target. And I want to get that value as little as possible. So I'm double clicking that. Uh, I could maximize it. That would be a bit pointless, but I want to minimize it. And I want to change variable cells. So which cells do I want to change? Well, I've labeled them up here. I want to change A underscore zero. So I'll start in concentration and I want to change K. Now, you might be thinking, why do I need to change the starting point uh, when I've got data here? Uh, now, you don't have to. Uh, you could just set it to whatever this initial value is. Uh, the trouble is that sometimes that's not necessarily representative of time zero. If you're doing an NMR spectrum, for instance, you might scan over the course of a minute. So your data point actually isn't a point in time, it's kind of an average of a minute. So it's only really representative. So you want to give a little bit of freedom to that starting point. Uh, and it's just kind of good practice to leave a little bit of extra wiggle room in there. Uh, and what Solver is now going to do is it's going to fiddle with those values uh, until our target cell is zero. So it's pretty close to zero right now. And I want to solve that. I want to OK this, keep solver solution. So what it's picked up is that uh, from the simulation, our initial concentration is actually 0 0.0266. The K is 0 0.0082. And look, these two lines now fit quite nicely. Uh, so that red line will be a perfect exponential decay. The blue line will have a bit of noise associated with it. But now we've got K is equal to 0 0.0082. Uh, that's not too bad. We've got 0 0.0079 for the one done this way uh, and 82 for the one this way. So that's you know pretty close. Uh, if we got more data points, this is remember only fitting to four uh, and that's quite a, quite a shallow curve there. Uh, we probably get very similar results, but because we've knocked off two and we're only fitting to four data, they're likely to disagree by a little bit. Uh, not by too much, certainly within experimental error. So there's a value we can get from here. Now, again, the advantage of this method uh, using solver and trying to get this is that, you know, we could have K1, K2, K3 and solve for multiple rate constants for a lot more complicated data if we wanted to, uh, or we can do non uh, first order reactions and with two concentrations changing. Uh, so it is a much more powerful and more extensible method. Uh, so. Here we just take advantage of taking logs. It's a really straightforward thing. You can plot this by hand if you like. Uh, you don't need to do it via a computer. This simulation method uh, is much more powerful, at least in my opinion. This is how I would go about doing it. Uh, and it's how I've gone about doing it in the past as well. So find solver, set your cells, use the integrated rate law to predict the data Find your least squares regression, which is the difference between the two values squared. Total them up with the sum function here, and then use Solver to minimize that. And you will get a nice decay curve that matches your data. And this is probably pretty good for a rate constant, 0 0.0082. It matches with what we've got already. So if you got something from that, great. Uh, if you skipped it, you're obviously not watching this part. Uh, so we will see you in the lecture and we will then move on to doing some other topics. So I think this kind of wraps up the whole thing we need to know about rates right now. So uh, congratulations if you made it this far uh, and we'll see you in the next lecture.